Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'll be showing you how to rebuild a UTV CV axle. All right, so today I'll be showing you how to rebuild a CV axle from the Polaris XP 1000. Now, the process for rebuilding the CV axles are pretty similar, if not the same, for most ATVs and UTVs that are out there. Now, the CV axles are very strong considering how they are built. However, they can fail, especially if they are subjected to extreme conditions and abuse. So if you have a broken axle, a cheaper option to replacing it would be to rebuild it. And in this video, I'll show you how. Now, when it comes to identifying as to whether or not you have a broken axle, some common symptoms are that you're going to start hearing a clicking noise, especially when the vehicle is turning. So if that's what you're experiencing, you may want to look into rebuilding or replacing the axle depending on the extent of the damage. Now, as far as tools go to rebuild this axle, they may vary from machine to machine, but you will at least want to have a hammer, flathead screwdriver, punch, some dikes, the Tusk CV band cutting tool, we've got some snap ring pliers, as well as the Tusk CV boot banding tool, then we've got some pliers as well as some pick tools some rubber gloves, safety glasses, contact cleaner, and some rags. Now, as far as replacement parts go, we've got some here from Polaris. These are OEM replacements of our inboard and our outboard joints. They will come with the race and cage that is found inside of each one of these joints. We'll be using the all balls, which come with the CV grease and the banding clamps. Now, these do come sold individually, so when you pick yourself some up, be sure to grab an inboard as well as an outboard. Now you may want to pick up an additional snap ring or spring ring or circlip that sits inside of here that keeps our outer joint onto the axle and our inner joint held to the axle. So let's show you how to rebuild it. To begin, we're going to take our axle, place the inboard side into our vise with soft jaws. Next, we'll remove the banding. Then we can slide the CV boot up on the axle. Next inside of here is a snap ring that we need to remove with our pick tool. Then we can remove the axle from the plunging joint. Remove the inboard joint from the vise. Place the axle in the vise. Remove some of the grease at the end of the axle here so that you can see the snap ring. Now some axles may have a snap ring, some axles may have a spring ring. If you have a spring ring inside of there, you will want to hammer this joint apart and off of the axle, which we'll show you how to do on the outboard joint. Remove the snap ring, then we can remove the race and cage. Remove the CV boot. Now, I just wanted to point out, this is our inboard race and cage that came out of the plunging joint side of the CV axle. And as you can see, it has broken. Now this is what was making our axle start to make a clicking noise. Reposition the axle and the vise with the outboard side clamped into your vise. Remove the two banding clamps. Pull the CV boot up onto the shaft. With the CV boot removed, take a rag and remove the excess grease that's inside of the joint. Then we can remove the axle from the vise. We're going to clamp it back into the vise about here in the center. Now to remove the outboard joint, we will need a punch and a rather large hammer as we will be pounding on the inner race of the racing cage of our joint here so that we can remove it from the end of the shaft. Now keep in mind that Polaris does not recommend that you completely disassemble the axle because during the disassembly, this joint can easily be damaged and ruined. We're going to place our punch on the very inside of our race here. All right, now that we've got our new parts laid out, old ones thrown away, we're going to clean our axle. Now that we've got our axle clean, we're going to flip it around in the vise so that the outboard side is facing up. Then we can remove the circlip at the top of the axle. Install our new circlip. We'll take our CV grease and grease the splines. All right, now that we've got the end of our axle here nice and lubed up, we're going to remove it from the vise and replace it with the outboard. Then we can take the outboard side of our axle. We're going to place it in here, line up the 
splines. Now once we get this started, we're going to take our pick tool and we want to make sure that the circlip seats properly in the joint. Once we've got the circlip set, we can drive it home with our hammer. Once you've got it set, give it a good tug to make sure that it doesn't come out of the socket. Now that we've got that in place, we can take our CV grease. We're going to empty the entire contents of this package into the joint itself. And once you get enough grease on there, you kind of want to work it down into the joint with your fingers to make sure that it makes it through to the other side. Next, we can install the CV boot onto our axle. Now, before we do, we want to clean the landing area here that our CV boot clamp clamps onto. Make sure that it's clean and has no grease. Work the boot onto the outer joint until it seats, as well as the inner part of the CV boot's joint. Then we can take it out of the vise, put it on the table, and install our band clamps. Now, when installing the CV bands onto the CV boots, you want to keep in mind which axle you're rebuilding and know its orientation of rotation. So for instance, when we install these, this is a driver rear, the axle is going to be rotating in this direction. So when we fold back our banding clamp to secure it, we want to fold it back in the opposite direction of the axle's rotation. That way we can ensure that the banding clamp right here at this spot won't come undone if it's to hit an object. To secure the banding clamp, we're going to use the Tusk CV boot banding tool. We're going to place it into the opening and the tip of it. I'm going to pull the tail through, then we can tighten the CV band onto the boot. Now you want to make sure that you don't over tighten it as we would rip the CV boot and also make sure that it's inside of the channel it's designated to be set in. So we'll tighten this up a little bit, we'll roll the tool back, pull the tail out from the tool, we can take our tusk banding clamp cutters, cut off the excess tail, and we'll take our hammer. We're going to hammer over this edge, just kind of flatten it out to make sure that it stays nice and tight. And we'll take our pliers, we'll pull the two tabs over, make sure they're set with a hammer. And then with our cutters, we're going to trim it off, trim off the excess, we have about half an inch left. Trim the corners. And make sure that it seats. Now we're going to repeat the same process for the smaller diameter, but first we need to equalize the pressure that's inside of here. So we're going to take our small pick tool. You can use a small flat screwdriver if you want. We're going to slide this underneath the boot. Be careful not to pierce the boot. We're going to slide it inside of there. Then we're just going to kind of lift up on it. And this way, we can equalize the pressure inside of there. So now that we've got our outboard side finished, we need to move on to the inboard. Now, it's very important that you do not forget to install the CV boot first before you begin the assembly. Now, some of you at home are going to rebuild this outer side and realize that you forgot to put the CV boot on. So it's very important that you put this on first. Now we can take the axle, place it back into our vise. Then we can take some of our CV axle grease and lightly coat the splines. Now something to note real quick here, before installing this assembly, which is the race and cage, you want to make sure that this smaller diameter side of this assembly is facing in towards the center of the axle shaft itself. And then we'll have this larger side facing outwards towards the engine. So now that we've got that installed, we can take our new snap ring and snap ring pliers and install it onto the axle. Once the snap ring's in place, inspect it to make sure that it's sitting completely in its groove. Then we can remove the axle from the vise. We will place the inboard side into the vise with soft jaws. Then we can take some CV axle grease and coat the bearing channels of the plunging joint. Next, we can take our axle assembly and we can place it down into the plunging joint. Once we've got it inside of there, 
we can take the rest of our CV axle grease and we can fill the plunging joint. Then you want to make sure to work the grease into the plunging joint to make sure that the race and cage and the entire assembly is nice and coated with the CV axle grease. Next, before we install the CV boot, we'll want to clean the areas on the plunging joint and the axle where the CV boot's band will make contact and secure it. Be sure to install the snap ring that sits inside of here that retains the plunging joint assembly. Should hear a nice clip. Inspect it and make sure that it's seated properly. Now we can take the CV boot and slide it down into place. Once we have the CV boot in position, we can remove it from our vise and install our banding clamps. Now the process for installing the banding clamps on this CV boot are going to be the same for this side. Just keep in mind the direction of your axle's rotation. Now before we install the smaller diameter band, we need to equalize the pressure inside of the joint here. Now to do that, we're going to take our pick tool, we're going to insert it in between the axle and the boot, being mindful not to damage the boot. We need to create a gap between that fitting and then we're going to pull out on the plunging joint all the way. And this is going to equalize the pressure inside, so basically you want to equalize the pressure with the CV axle and the position that it's going to be in for the longest period of time. So we're going to pull out on it, equalize the pressure, and then we can secure the last band. And that's it. Knowing how to rebuild your CV axles will definitely help you to keep your machine in good shape. And you can find everything that you need to do that right here at RockyMountainATVMC.com. Now, if you have any questions or concerns as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave us a comment below and we'll be sure to get an answer back to you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how to's and top fives. That's it for me. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching and keep turning those wrenches.